Hey guys, welcome to the VisiCast. This is a showcase video for my newly painted Necron army. You would have seen them in a few battle reports and hopefully there are a few more to come as well. We're going to take a closer look at how I painted the army, why I painted it in that style, and then most importantly talk about the tactics and how the army works. There is a list in here as well, so if you feel like building your own Necron list, which is a little bit filthy, uh, then feel free to use this as a list. There's an 1850 point version and a 1500 point version. I'm going to give you variants on that as well. So let's jump into the list first of all, so then you know what we're working with. This is a Decurian Detachment Necron Army. It starts off with the Reclamation Legion. The Reclamation Legion is led by an Overlord. The Overlord has a War Scythe. He's also on a Catacomb Command Barge. And he has uh, the Nightmare Shroud. The Nightmare Shroud gives him a 2 plus arm save, which is really sweet, and allows him to force another unit to take a leadership test at some point during the shooting phase. In uh, the reason I've given him a Catacomb Command Barge as opposed to just having him on foot, because originally I did have him on foot, I spoke to a guy called Callum who was in a uh, battle report you would have seen with Tau. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Really, really good game. Uh, basically, he said afterwards I should take him on the Catacomb Command Barge. I faced off against that in tournaments in the past. Uh, this is in 6th uh, edition, I think, where the Catacomb Command Barge was a little bit better because in close combat, I think you have to resolve attacks against the arm facing into the chariot as opposed to the model, whereas now you can do it on the actual model, the Overlord. However, it's still pretty good and better on a Command Barge than it would be on foot. The main reason being, I've made sure that that unit has some sort of purpose, so I haven't just put him on there for no reason. He's got a purpose and he has a thing he should do, and what that is, is because he's got the war side, he's incredibly good at taking out vehicles. So if he gets into the back line of an enemy and, and there are loads of tanks there, he can just wipe them out. Or maybe a uh, sort of command squad for Tau with some like drones in it, he could easily wipe them out at the back. So he's got the Cashmere Command Bar, which allows him to turbo boost, so he can get to the other side of the board in a turn or two. And then on top of that, if he gets into close combat with a vehicle, he's wrecking it because it essentially counts as sort of a melter weapon in close combat. Near enough. So that's his purpose, and then you have two squads of 10 Necron Warriors, they are compulsory, but I've taken a Knight Side with each one of those. Now I've taken the Knight Side to allow them to be really mobile, I'm not a massive fan of infantry on foot, they move quite slowly, so to give them uh, Knight Sides means I can drop them off pretty much anywhere on the board, uh, which means in Maelstrom missions, even a town of war, you can pick an objective and go I want them there, and you're guaranteed to get them there pretty much, because they can disembark the turn they arrive. They can also then unload a load of Goths, which obviously glances on sixes, which means you can take out vehicles that way as well. I've got a squad of five Immortals, which I have to take. Um, not a massive fan, but you've got to take them. And then I've got three squads of three Tomb Blades. Now you only need to take one squad of three, however, I think that they're really, really good. They move super fast. You've got a 12 inch move and then a 24 inch turbo boost, which means they can get most places on the board in a turn or maybe two. Uh, that's really good for Maelstrom missions because you never know what objectives you're going to have. You have to be anywhere on the board. So to have a really, really mobile unit like those Tomb Blades is huge. They're not necessarily there for killing models, they're there for securing objectives. And games are usually won on securing objectives, not on how much you kill. If you watch a lot of the battle reports, you'll see that at the end, sometimes you can have two or three models left and still be winning or something like that. Because it is focused on objectives, you need to focus on those because they are what will win you the game, not killing another person. So that's why they're really useful to have. That is the Reclamation Legion. That's the main part. What the Reclamation Legion allows you to do is reroll ones on your reanimation protocol saves, the Warlord, and any unit within 12 inches of the Warlord. Now that's kind of cool because what the Decurion Detachment does, the sort of bigger formation this is all part of, is it lets you do reanimation protocols on a 4 plus. So for example, your standard Necron Warrior would have a 4 plus armor save, a 4 plus reanimation protocol save, and if he was within 12 inches of the Warlord, he'd also be re-rolling ones on that reanimation protocol save, which makes this army really, really resilient, which is really good, obviously, because you just need to survive most of the time and capture objectives to win a game. You don't need to kill stuff. Having said that, you do need to kill some stuff, because some stuff is going to be a major threat that could wipe you off the board. So, how do we deal with that? We've got three Canoptic Harvests. Canoptic Harvest is insanely good. So in the 1850 point variation, we have three of them. So a Canoptic Harvest contains a spider. And what the spider does in that formation is he allows the Wraiths, who are the other unit, and the Scarabs, who are the other unit, to have reanimation protocols or shred. It also gives them fleet, but they, for the most part, have fleet, so you don't really need to give that to them. But the fact that it gives them those special rules, it powers them an insane amount, makes them a lot more resilient. 
So those spiders have that ability. Then you have a squad of wraiths. In this instance, I've, had, I've got three squads of five. Wraiths have two wounds, three plus invulnerable saves, so they're pretty resilient anyway. But then if you add reanimation protocols by the spider and that formation, it doubles how tough they are pretty much, which makes them really, really difficult to take out, which is really cool. Uh, and then on top of that, you've got the scarabs. Now spiders birth out an additional scarab base once every turn. So to have three spiders and three squads of scarabs on the table means you're gonna be birthing new units every turn. And those units are quite good at taking out large creatures, tying people down in close combat, or taking out tanks, they're quite good at it as well. So that's the primary threat of the army, three of those coming towards you. Because there are three and they're exactly the same, it doesn't matter which one you target, and you're not gonna be able to take out all three before they get to you. Because they're beasts, they move 12 inches per turn, and they don't get slowed by any sort of terrain, which means they're gonna be in your face quite quickly. So they work together really, really nicely. And obviously, because it's part of the Jakurian, you get four plus reanimation protocols, not five plus. Again, resiliency. So that's pretty much the army, put it all together. If you wanted a 1500 point variation, you just take out one of the Canoptic Harvest, and I think a uh, Wraith or two, you'll have to check. But that's how you can take it down to 1500 points. Um, I had some other ideas for using this army. I wanted to originally, I was gonna put in, instead of another Canoptic Harvest, I was gonna put in an Annihilation Nexus, which is a Doomsday Arc, and two Annihilation Barges, however, I just, I don't think the firepower is going to be that useful. I would prefer to have another squad of wraiths and also wraiths. Whilst they are filth, I'm sure some of you are thinking this is disgusting, they are cool models. I've liked them since like 5th edition and I know they were sick back then. I didn't play them. I only started playing them recently. I just think the models and the way they work are really, really cool. So that's it. That's the army. The general theme or how I would approach a mission is just put the wraiths on the front line and charge them towards your enemy. Use other models such as the Tomb Blades to not necessarily focus down your enemy but to jump around the board and get objectives wherever they can get them because that's what they're there for. Your commander on this command barge needs to jump into the back lines, take out tanks or sort of squads that he could do, maybe a HQ choice like a Farseer stood at the back. Scarabs charge them into vehicles. Usually they can soak up a little bit of firepower, they will die quite quickly but they're there to sort of soak up a little bit of firepower. And then use your knight size to get the warriors where you need them, maybe capture an objective or add a little bit of extra firepower where they're needed. So the paint job, I'll talk about that very, very quickly. I had this inspiration. I went to a uh, tournament a very long time ago. I think it was the first one I went to. It was in Reading. I think it was called Reading Warfare. I met a guy, I think his name was Pete, I can't remember, but he had a fully airbrushed uh, Necron army and I thought, he told me it took him a weekend to paint it. It looked incredible and it won Best Painted. And I was like, that is cool. And it had all this glowy effect in it. So I really like that as an idea. Then I, for some reason, I don't know where this came from, I really wanted a sort of sand color Necron army. Uh, so I started doing some research to look for other armies like that. I think I saw that on Tabletop Tactics. I think there was an army which was a little bit sand colored. I did some searching on Google, a lot of searching, and I found a few examples of some sand based Necrons and I knew I wanted blue, a blue glow in them because I just think that looks really, really cool and I thought the two would go nicely together. So, started this army in January and we are now in May and I finally finished it. So it hasn't taken that long to do 1850 points with an airbrush and I think the effect is really cool. Uh, the basic method I followed, there's a guy called Bi Painted on YouTube and he, um, he airbrushes some Deathwing Knights. So all I did was I used the base colors for the Deathwing Knights as my colors for the uh, Necrons, which worked really, really well. So if you want to, I'll put a link below so you can see how that's done, which is basically how I painted mine. Just applied that theme to the army in terms of pre-shading uh, and then highlighting as well. So it's quite straightforward. And the blue, I just airbrushed up different shades of blue. It was pretty straightforward, but it leads for a really cool effect that ties the whole army together. If you guys have any ideas as to how uh, I can make the Necrons cooler, like cool objective markers or um, cool scenery, places I can buy that stuff from, or ideas or ways, links to a place I can make that kind of stuff. Let me know, because I think that's really cool. Like, I really like buying into an army like with everything in terms of like even, I don't know, paint up a tape measure to look like a old stone or something like that. I don't know, anything. If you guys can think of anything, let me know, because I think that'd be really cool. And we can make this sort of an army with ideas from everyone, that'd be awesome. If you wanna see this army in action, check out some of the battle reports on the channel. If you guys can like, comment, subscribe, you have no idea how big a difference that makes. Subscribers alone have been going up incredibly over the last week and a half. I think we've nearly doubled, which is awesome, like really cool. Um, so if you guys keep 
on subscribing, keep commenting, keep liking. I really appreciate it. I try to get back to pretty much everyone I can. If I to pretty much get back to everyone. So if I don't get back to you, there's something wrong with you. I'm joking. So cheers, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks.